Those are some intense calculations you're doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> this is how people um, did calculations before we had machines. I prefer computers, thank you. Oh, to each their own. <laughs> well, I think you just subtracted. <laughs> <laughs> The computer is such an important invention that it literally ushered in a new age of thinking, right? The information age. It might be one of the most important inventions of all time. But computers started a long time ago, and the Franklin Institute has a very early computer, the Hollerith tabulating machine. This was invented by Herman Hollerith, who was a census taker, and he got tired of getting those cards punched and then handwriting all the information down. So he created a machine to do that work for him, a machine that you put the punch card in and the metal pins attached to the mercury bath in the bottom, and that electric current triggers a dial, and that dial counts the resident for you. I mean, so they used to just do the census by hand? They used to do the census by hand, and it would take eight years to do a census, and that is. Makes so much more sense about why it would take 10 years that we should count ourselves every 10 years. Right, exactly. It, it takes eight just to do the math. Absolutely. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Herman Hollerith's tabulating machine, the data took two years to process instead of eight. I mean, that's a huge leap forward. But then people realized that there were um, applications for this machine in lots of different fields because you could rewire it so that it would do different kinds of analysis. The Hollerith Tabulating Machine Company became IBM, International Business Machine Company. So let's look at the big milestones in computing. In 2400 BCE, abacus devices were used in Babylonia. The first computer was mechanical, done by hand, invented by Charles Babbage in the mid-1800s. In 1945, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, or ENIAC, was developed by the U.S. Army. It was developed in secret to compute artillery firing tables and was programmed by six women known as the ENIAC girls. They would change out the tubes as things would malfunction. It's pretty cool. In 1959, microchip and semiconductor inventions were patented and that changed the future. Almost all modern computer products use chip technology. In the 1980s, we started to see computers get smaller and smaller. They didn't fill rooms anymore, now we could have them at home. And we got the personal computer. In 1989, the computers all connected together to make the World Wide Web. It was created at the Center for European Nuclear Research, or CERN. The first website at CERN ran on a single computer and it had a sticky note on it that said, never turn it off. Oh no, is it still on? No, they eventually did turn it off, but they turned it back on. And today, as of 2013, it's living at its original URL on the web. In the 2000s, we started to get broadband. And then today, of course, everyone more or less has computers in their pockets or on their wrists all the time. Today, we have this connected living and it's, you know, sometimes good. So Moore's law says that the number of transistors in a given space is gonna shrink. And so we're gonna end up with comparably powerful or more powerful computers. Essentially computing power is gonna double about every 18 months. But we're running up against the edge of Moore's law. Computers are getting so small and so tightly packed with their little transistors that electrons are just jumping around in there. They're not following the rules that they used to follow when the computer chips were bigger. So that's why we need something new and that is quantum computing. It's gonna affect industries across the world, from pharmaceuticals to finance, logistics to aerospace, even AI. When we look at the computers of yesteryear to the, where we're going, I don't think there's any comparison. Do you agree? Yeah, I sort of agree here. I mean, the, it was pretty ingenious for them to think, okay, we're writing this down by hand, but it's also a natural progression to say, let's have some other machine do this for us. Right. Right. I think then there's a big leap to, we're going to take this adding machine and have it animate video games. Like that's a huge leap. And we can't even imagine where it's going to go from here. At some point, it's going to be even beyond what we today can think about. Like the most ingenious thing is going to be the next thing that happens with computing. And then the next thing after that. And it could come from somebody watching this video right now. Could come from you. <laughs> <laughs>